the splendor of the King. Clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at they tremble. Sing how great, how great, how great.
great God because you're great I lift you up come I magnify you Lord hallelujah yes that's it I love you Jesus I worship you Oh,
if you need a blessing.
can just lift our hands to him as we give him the glory and give him the honor. All praise and adoration is due unto the mighty name of Jesus. Come on. Come on, however you feel comfortable here this morning. Just giving God glory and giving him honor. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Anytime, anytime that we begin to worship and magnify the Lord, his presence will show up. Because he said that he would be in the midst of the praises of his people. And so when you begin to worship and when we begin to magnify and we begin to lift up the name of Jesus and we begin to put everything else aside and just focus on him and worshiping him and magnifying him God shows up on the scene and then it's our choice whether we want to tap in to what he's doing or whether we don't he's not going to be uh, God is very much a gentleman the Holy Ghost is very much a gentleman and so he's not going to push himself on anybody but he opens up the door of opportunity and says here it is if you want it come get it and the presence of the Lord comes in in such a powerful way and it's because of the worship and it's because of the praise and it's because of the sacrifice that the presence of the Lord will show up and touch us in such a tremendous way. What a, what a sweet presence of the Lord that is here today. All of our children up here praying and some of our adults up here praying. God just touches us when we begin to lift up his name and his presence visits with us. In Jesus' precious name, as you make your way back to your seats let me just say once again welcome to all of our guests that are here with us today if you are a first time guest here with us we want to just tell you how honored we are to have you today thank you for being here with us and uh, what you're feeling around here is just a little bit of the response of the presence of the Lord when his people begin to worship him we're not as crazy as some people say we are well I guess the reality is we're not any crazier than anybody else so Whatever you want to call us, I guess they, we've got all kinds of names and uh, we've been called, you know, people that swing from chandeliers, but we took care of that because there's no chandeliers in here, so we can't swing from those anymore. And We have been accused of being holy rollers and that probably I can't do away with because there probably is once in a while that we might get a little roll happening and um, somebody tried to play that off and say Jesus is a rock and he rolled my sins away, so uh, we're just holy rollers. Um, there's been a lot of things we've been called, but you know, one thing I'm glad to be called is the child of the King. Amen. So we are, we are so thankful for you being here with us today. If this is all new to you and you think that, uh, you've not ever been in a service like this, it's okay. Come back and try us again. We'll be the same way the next time you show up. But we want you just to get involved with the presence of the Lord. Don't be scared. Nobody's going to come over and grab you or do anything to you. Nobody's going to shake you. Or if they do, you come get me and I'll shake them. So don't you worry about it. We're just going to worship the Lord and love Him and let God's presence move on us. And we respond to that mercy and that grace and that love that He shows us by our worship. And so we are so thankful to have you here today. Uh, if you'll get your Bibles, I'm going to make just a couple of quick announcements here and then we're going to get right into uh, the Word here today. Uh, if you'll give me just a little bit of time. Now, we don't have service tonight, so that means you got a little extra time today. So you can give me a few minutes extra uh, this morning and uh, then you can relax this afternoon. But uh, we have a discipleship process that goes on here at New Life and it's called Connect Point. And uh, there's about six different levels of Connect Point and uh, it's about 24 weeks now, but before that it was somewhere in the neighborhood of about 36 to 38 weeks. And uh, we've tried to condense it just a little bit. Uh, but there are those who have completed that. And uh, these two individuals have completed probably the long version. Uh, because not only did they do the full version, but then they had pastor for extra weeks. And, and uh, we just kept meeting and talking and, and covering things in scripture. And so uh, they got the extended version. Uh, but I am congratulating them this morning and tell them how uh, much of an uh, accomplishment it is to complete uh, the Connect Point program and all of the discipleship classes and what you learn from all of that and the material you walk away with. And so, Joe Jones and Brittany Ramsey, congratulations. Congratulations. 
Amen. Joe's already been taking some of that stuff he's learning and using it in other places and talking to other people about it. And so God's using him in that aspect. And that's the whole idea. That's the whole idea. Amen. We stay on milk for a little while, but we can't be milk forever. It's cute to watch a baby crawl, but when they get about 25 and still crawling, it ain't so cute no more. And so at some point we grow up and we get on the meat of the word and then we start sharing that same thing with somebody else. So we're so thankful for that. Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 and 19. As you're turning there, the last thing I want to say is that in the month of May, uh, our, our Sunday school department, and uh, along with Matthew 25, is trying to help raise a little bit of money for our Sunday school children that are going to go to summer camps this year. And so they are going to benefit you while you benefit them. And so three Sundays in the month of May, the 1st, the 15th, and the 29th. So every other Sunday... Uh, next door at the Connection Center starting at 8.30 in the morning. If you want to join them, there's going to be sausage biscuits and egg biscuits and donuts and French toast and coffee. and whew. So you can come and have breakfast before you come to church. And, and then you got all your energy and you're ready to go. Get some extra syrup so you got sugar and you're ready to just run and burn it all off. And just make sure those of you that are in the weight loss thing that you weigh in before you eat breakfast because it might be a problem if you do that otherwise. And so you'll see some more information on that, but uh, trying to help our children. We have a lot that go to summer camps, and, and uh, we want to help them any way that we can. And so you get to benefit from the process as well. So I want us to pray before we get started here this morning and ask God to touch us today for the next few minutes. And the um, message that I have today is probably more generated towards the church family as far as those of us who have been around here uh, more so than maybe a guest directed, but it, it will still be directed even to our guests when you understand the principle of what we're going to teach and preach here this morning. So let's pray one more time and ask the Lord to touch us. Lord, we love you today, God, and we thank you once again for your presence, Lord, that we feel in this house. God, for your power and for your anointing, God, that we feel. And God, I pray, Lord, under the next few minutes, Lord, that you will touch us. God, anoint my lips, God, and my mind, God, to deliver your anointed word. God, anoint our ears to hear it. God, our hearts to receive and respond, God, I pray. Lord, that you'll confirm your word here today before we leave here. God, let the presence of God move on us again. God, as that anointed word goes forth, and we're going to give you all of the glory and all of the honor for it. And everybody said in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18 and 19. I'm just going to read this to you, and then you can be seated this morning. I taught for about 10 weeks on this scripture, uh, and uh, I'm going to take it from a totally different angle this morning. Uh, and, and preach something totally different in reference to it. But Matthew 16 verse 18 says, And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, Jesus speaking here to Peter. And he said, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And then verse number 19 he says, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And so as you're seated this morning, I want you just to understand that we, we want to touch on a different aspect of this, of this scripture here today. Uh, I, I hope to show you this morning uh, that we serve a great God. We serve a great God who has done many wonderful things for us. Anybody believe that this morning? That we serve a great and awesome God. I, I hope that before we get done today, my prayer will be that you see that without Him, we can do nothing. Without Him, we can do nothing. My life is blessed, and He is the reason. My, I have victory in my life, and He is the reason. I have power in my life, and He is the reason. I have been delivered from whatever you want to fill in the blank on, and He is the reason. Now, I say that, that He is the reason, and most of you immediately think I'm preaching a Christmas message. It's not a Christmas message this morning. But I, I do think that our society, uh, as a society, we have regulated him to being the reason for the season. 
And we have just regulated him to that time of, uh, of, of period of time or season. And so I, I stand here this morning to tell you that with all of the ability I have, I want to share the grace, mercy, and love of Christ. Not because of some great thing that I have done. See, because it's not by my ability and it's not by my talent or by my pedigree or my background that has brought me where I am today and allowed me to stand here today. It, he is the reason that I am standing here and he is the reason and I promise you it's not just for a season he's the reason and it's not just a season in this verse that we read we see where he's talking to Peter and he begins to tell him about being the the rock and that he is going to build his church upon uh, this rock and 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 he's going to give him the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever he binds on earth will be bound in heaven whatsoever he looses on earth will be loosed in heaven and he gives this revelation if you will of who we really are in Christ Jesus now let me ask you this question have you ever known anyone that was not happy with themselves Nobody point to anybody, and especially not yourself this morning. But you've known people who are not happy with themselves. There are millions upon millions of dollars worth of hair dyes and makeups and colored contact lenses and cosmetics that are sold yearly. And the reason why is because somebody's not happy with themselves. Not just the women. So before you think I'm just on the ladies... Not just the women this morning, but men are spending more on physical enhancements to try to find some sense of happiness. They can't just be happy with who they are. I've always said I needed to get in shape. And, and there's some that have told me, don't worry about it, round is a shape. And so, you know, some guys, you know, they, they say they got a six pack. Well, some of us got a full barrel. Let me just put it that way. So there's so much that is spent and it's done so just so somebody will say something complimentary to them so that they can feel happy about themselves. But the bottom line is they're just not happy. They're just not happy with themselves. And there, there are people that have had different types of cosmetic surgeries and, and then they make the statement when it's all said and done that they're still not happy. Why is it that they're not happy? It's, it's because happiness is not an outside emotion. It's not just something you can do on the outside and that's going to make you happy. That's not what it is. But see, the, the, the spirit of this world has sold people a bill of goods that says, if you look a certain way, if you weigh a certain amount, if you drive a certain kind of car, if you wear a certain kind of clothes, then you're going to fit in with the rest of society and that's going to make you happy. But if you're not careful, you begin to look like other people and begin to look at those people and say, if I only had what they had, if I was only more like they are, then I would be happy. David, even David said, if you look up in Scripture, made the statement, he said, when I saw the prosperity of the wicked, my foot came nigh to slip. Translating what he was saying is that he desired to have what they had. He wanted to be like them and it was a temptation that he had. But guess what? It's a temptation that we all fight at different times in our life. We all struggle with it. And so if you're not careful, this will slip into your walk with God as well. And you'll find yourself feeling inadequate because you don't line up to somebody else's standards. Whatever they believe that you should be. Your, your daddy wasn't a preacher. Your mama doesn't go to church. You, you, you can't pray like somebody. You can't sing like so-and-so. You can't do all of these things. You, you don't know what I've done and where I've come from and what I've been through. And, and you don't know the things that have happened. So I'm trying to compare myself to somebody else. And so this outward seeking of happiness we find falls over into our spiritual walk with God because we think that somebody else has it better than we do I wish I could pray like they do you know why they probably pray the way that they pray because you don't know what they've been through that made them pray that way <laughs> and sometimes you might be wishing on yourself some things you didn't want I I I've heard people say I just want to pray for patience no you don't <laughs> no you don't because God will teach you patience and in the middle of it, you'll be going, oh God, what's going on? And he's going, didn't you ask for patience? And you learn how to pray through some of the circumstances that happen in life. See, a lot of times when we have this deep walk and this deep prayer life, it's because God's brought us through some things. 
And so I go through struggles and I go through trials and I go through situations that causes me to lean on God because I know I can't do it myself. And so I begin to communicate with Him through prayer and it develops a prayer life. That's where it comes from. So don't begin to compare yourself. I wish I could do this or I wish I was like them or I wish... Because you may not know what you're wishing for. I want to develop a walk with God. And, and so this, this whole seeking happiness kind of falls over into our, even our spiritual walk with God. And, and, and I, I, I just understand that uh, people have to be so very careful because I don't have the same background as somebody else. And my, my family didn't grow up in church. And, and my family hadn't done this. Or, or I'm not part of the history or the, the heritage. Here's the good thing about the Pentecostal church. Is that we believe in Jesus name baptism. And so when you get baptized in Jesus name. You take on every bit of heritage. That the name of Jesus has with it. So it doesn't matter if you're first generation. Or you're 50th generation. It doesn't matter. It just means that now I have a part of a heritage. There's some of you in here this morning that are first generation Pentecost, but you're already starting to change the next generation coming after you. They don't know anything else other than truth and Pentecost. You've changed their heritage. And so we try to find this, and, and, and so many people want to want to run from their past. I, I told you last week, I believe it was, or maybe the week before, that the past is the only thing the enemy can use against you, and so you got to get it washed under the blood, and you got to get it underneath Christ, and, and get it underneath the shedding of His blood, but you can't just run from it because it's your greatest testimony. You, you, you don't want to get away, you want to get it and deal with it and be done with it so the devil can't tempt you with it anymore. But you also need to understand that it is your greatest testimony. You, you don't believe what I'm telling you? Uh, there's people in here that can say, I was once a drunk, but now I'm not. I was once a drug addict, but now I'm not. I once lived an immoral lifestyle, but look what the Lord has done in my life. Listen, I've told you before, I don't want to glamorize my past. But I don't want to forget it either because I want somebody to know if God can do that for me, He can do that for you. He can do it for anybody. I use it as a testimony to reach the next one. Look what the Lord has done. There's some of you in here right now that shouldn't be here right now. You shouldn't be sitting on a church pew. You shouldn't be here right now because of whatever the situation may be. Maybe it was just a traditional uh, church that you went to that didn't teach you the truth. And there's really no reason you should be here. But somebody shared truth with you and now you are. Maybe you were a drunk. Maybe you were an alcoholic. Uh, maybe you were a drug addict. Maybe you just lived immoral. Maybe you just had the, uh, the, the worst reputation of anybody in town. But now when they see you, they say, wait a minute, something's different about them. There's something different about them, and it's not just the way they look, because that's just outward. There's something different about the inside of them. There's something different on the inside. They talk different. They, they act different. They don't go to the places they used to go. Something's different about them. Guess what? He is the reason why. I don't care if you drank like a fish. I don't care if you use more drugs than a pharmacy can sell in a day. Or if you made out with every guy or girl that came across the street, God still loves you and cares for you and he wants you. As a matter of fact, Paul made a very bold statement when he said, and such were some of you. That's why you don't ever need to forget where God brought you from because you might get uppity at somebody else and think, well, they are, they're this or they're that. But you need to remember such were some of you. Had it not been for the mercy and the grace of God that won me or won my family or won my parent or my grandparent and brought us into this wonderful truth. Had it not been for Jesus, I wouldn't be here right now. I'm not the reason. He is the reason. Can I tell you that God created you to be yourself? You are unique to God. Just as unique as a handprint or a fingerprint is. Just as unique as a DNA is. God made you unique. God made you to be you. And so no matter what you cut, tuck, dye, wear, it will never change who you really are. You can never be anyone else other than who God created you to be. Just as we expect. You ready? Here's, here's the deep, deep part this morning. You ready? Just as we expect God to be who He is. He expects us to simply be who we are. Just as much as we expect God to be. We don't want God to change. 
He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We don't want God to change. Well, God wants us to be just who we are as well. Don't let the devil or the world or people put thumbs down on you. Don't let low self-esteem hold you down. Please hear this preacher today. He is the reason. And he's the reason not just for a season, but he will change your life forever. Please hear me. You are a child of the king. When he fills you with his spirit, when you're baptized in his precious name, you now belong to him. He died for you to have a life and not just have a life, but have a life more abundantly. He died for you. He's the reason and not just for a season. You get up in the morning, you should remind yourself, I am blessed and highly favored of God. When you get up tomorrow morning and put your feet on the floor, why don't you make the statement, I belong to the Lord. Why don't you look the adversary in the eye before you ever even get started tomorrow and say, I am blessed and I am highly favored of God. I am a child of the King of Kings and I belong to Him. I've been adopted by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and that's not a bad thing. Before you look at it as being a bad thing, being adopted, make sure you understand that means that he didn't have to come to you, but he chose to. Please hear what I'm telling you. He didn't have to come do it, but he did. He chose to make you one of his children, and that's one of the greatest blessings we could have. He delights in us. He purchased us. I am water baptized, Holy Ghost filled, anointed child of God. I wish you could understand what I'm trying to tell you, that the devil doesn't want you to get a hold of this this morning because low self-esteem will stop you in your tracks. Low self-esteem will derail you when you start looking at yourselves. And listen, I promise you, there's none of us good enough. The good thing is that I didn't have to be good to get God. I had to get God to get good. Huh? I didn't have to have a set parameter of who I was in order for God to accept me I came to God and God changed me and the devil doesn't want you to understand that but when you get out of bed in the morning and your feet hit the floor and you start saying things like greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world when you start saying things like I am blessed and highly favored of God when you start saying things like I belong to the king of kings and the lord of lords when you get up in the morning and your feet hit the floor that way Satan ought to begin shaking in his shoes his knees ought to start knocking and his teeth start chattering because he looks at everybody else and says uh oh they finally got it they finally realize who they are they finally understand the power that comes with the name of Jesus he ought to get nervous I I need you to hear what I'm trying to tell you this morning you have to start believing in yourself again believe in who you are in Christ Jesus there were there were two ghosts upstairs in a house and one night they heard a noise And uh, so one of the ghosts snuck downstairs to investigate what was going on in the house and the noise that they heard. And it wasn't long before he came running back up the stairs and he was shaking and his knees were knocking. He looked at the other ghost and he said, "Uh, do you believe in people? (laughs) Somewhere along the way, you got to start believing in who you are and the power you have and the authority you have. you got to start believing it. I, I wish that I could get you to understand it and, and get you to start believing in yourself again. Start believing in your spouse again. Start believing in your children again. Start believing in your church again. Start believing in your pastor again. Start believing in your God again. Start believing in who you are. Somebody this morning ought to serve notice on the devil and tell him, I can make it. Spouse, I'm going to live for God. Mama, I'm going to go to church. Family, friend, co-worker, schoolmate, I'm not letting anybody hold me back. I believe that God has brought me where I am, and I believe that God has me in his hand. you got to start believing in yourself again. Satan wants you to live in condemnation. He wants you to, I wish you hear me this morning, he wants you to come to church with your head hanging down. That's what he wants you to do. He wants you to live in condemnation. But the Bible says that there is therefore now no condemnation to those who live in Christ Jesus. Do you know what the word condemnation means? The word means from the Hebrew, it means adverse judgment. 
So what you need to understand about the scripture is that Satan cannot render judgment on you. He doesn't have that power. He doesn't have that authority. The Bible calls him the accuser of the brethren. And he stands before God. And God says, have you considered my servant? And fill your name in in the blank. When he said the same thing about Job, have you considered my servant Job? When he, he, the devil comes to him and he, he says, you know, I, I'm going around seeking who can I devour. And God says, have you considered my servant? And put your name in there. And, and Satan gets out his little book and he opens it up. And, and he says, uh, look, look here, I, I want you to see what I found. I, I know you said have I considered them, but I, I want you to see what I found. Let me, let me show you my little notebook. And he opens up his little notebook of things that he's written down. And he says things like this, you know, they, they said a bad word two weeks ago. Six months ago, she had a nasty attitude with her mama. He, he just told his boss off. You know what? He didn't pray for a whole week. He, he's really messed up. She's fallen and, and made mistakes. And God says, let, let, let me see that book. And, and he takes the book out of his hands and he, he begins to flip through the pages. But see, when he begins to open it up, all he sees is blood dripping from the pages. And it's just blank pages to God because he looks at it and says, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Because I died that they might have an opportunity to have all of that forgiven. I, I laid on a cross that they might have an opportunity to have all of that gone. And so when the devil comes and tries to accuse you, God just looks at it and says, no, that's one of my children. And you can't accuse them. When he opens it up, all he sees is blood dripping from blank pages. It's under the blood. So quit beating yourself up over it. Put it behind you and get on with living for God. I, I need you to understand God's mercy. We, we, we need to understand God's mercy. We, we need to understand it. For some, it, it may have been a while since you've needed to use that mercy. But for me, I'm glad that God shows us mercy when we make mistakes and when we goof up and when we have a mistake. I, I'm glad God shows mercy. And I'm, I'm glad he doesn't just kick us out and say, well, you've blown it this time. You can't come back. I, I'm just telling you, I'm glad God doesn't act like we do sometimes. There's some of us that live by that, you know, turn the other cheek principle. And we say, well, God, you know, they got me this time. And I turned the other cheek, got my time. So now it's time for me to handle it. <laughs> you, you know, his word said how many times we should forgive. And it says 70 times 7. Anybody real quick with math, how many times is that? 490 times for the same thing in a day. Now, I don't suggest you try it. But I'm just telling you the kind of spirit we ought to have towards it. I'm thankful because I've messed up more than once a day and probably for the same thing sometimes. And God still forgave me. So I'm not saying you go up to your neighbor and try it. I mean, Chris is pretty calm, but I probably would imagine about after the 250th time, he probably would have had enough. <laughs> and then he started saying things like, God, forgive me for what I'm fixing to do. <laughs> I need mercy right now for what I'm fixing to do. But understand something, that God wants you to know that he has mercy available to us each and every day. Now, do we just go sin knowing that God has mercy? The word says, God forbid. I, I don't do it that way. But I know that when I mess up and the devil comes to try to accuse me, God just simply says, you know what? I'm going to wash that underneath the blood because they found their way back to an altar of forgiveness and God touches us. You need to realize, quit letting the devil beat you up with low self-esteem and realize Jesus is really the reason why I have what I have. Jesus is the reason why I am what I am. It's not because of me. It's simply because of him. He is the reason. The problem is some of, too many of us got the Humpty Dumpty concept. <laughs> Anybody know what that is? Well, your mind just ran crazy right there just trying to figure out what it is. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men had bacon, eggs, and cheese omelets that next morning <laughs> because they couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. See, uh, let, me, let me just get personal for just a second. Just because you made a mistake and just because you fell does not mean that you can't make your way back. 
Remember, it's not because of us anyway. He is the reason. What we need to understand is that the one that we're depending on is the same one that can put us back together again. So don't get the Humpty Dumpty concept that says once I've fallen and cracked, I can't get back up again because that's not the case. The one who created you, the one who you're depending on is the same one that can put you back together again. I don't have time to get into the long story about the potter, but many of you have heard the story about a potter and a potter's wheel. And if he creates something that has a, has a blemish in it, that he can just set it right back on the wheel and add a little more water to it and take a little bit more time and begin to work with that again and begin to take that piece and, and even a broken piece and add it to some new clay and begin to fix it and repair it. And, and so he really can put us back together again. We have to be careful towards our brothers and sisters that too many times we we make others feel that because they made a mistake, they could never get back to God. One good thing about God's mercy is that we can never run too far and we can never mess up too much and we can never fall down too many times that His mercy won't still reach for us. Others may run out of mercy, but God's mercy... The Bible says endures forever. We may run out of mercy. We may run out of patience with some people. But God's mercy is continually reaching towards them. I I wish that I could get you to understand this morning that we are not perfect. We all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. We are not perfect. We all make mistakes. Not just some of us. But all of us make mistakes. From the pulpit to the back door, we all make mistakes. None of us are perfect. But the great thing is, it's not because of me. He is the reason. See, what you need to understand is He is the Redeemer. He is the Healer. He is the Savior. He is the bright and morning star. He is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the Rock. He is the Messiah. He is. I am the loser. I am the damaged goods. I am the faithless one. I'm the one that's had the bad days, that gets the attitude, that gets discouraged, that feels like giving up or giving in. I'm the one that has that, but not him. The awesome thing is that it's not because of me. He is the reason. And it doesn't matter what the season is. He's still the reason. Don't try to just relegate his love and his mercy His grace and His power to just a season of life. But please understand that His authority over me is every minute of every day of every season. Just as we expect God to be who He is, He simply expects us to be who we are. Understand, you are not the rock. You are a piece of the rock. Jesus asked Peter, Who do men say that I am. And then they said, some say John the Baptist, some say Elias, some say Jeremiah. But then he looked at Peter and he said, okay, but who do you say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. But watch something. Jesus then said, that's right, Simon Barjona, I am. So here's what I want you to see in the message today. Of the scripture. And notice something in the scripture here today. Also he said I say also unto thee. That thou art. Who? Peter. He said thou art Peter. Okay. Notice that in scripture. Thou art Peter. That's all you will ever be. Just simply Peter. A man who rebuked the Lord. A man who cut off Malchus' ear. A man that returned to his old lifestyle of fishing. A rough, hard, brazen man that cursed and denied the Lord. Simply Peter. A piece of the rock. But then he said, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock, Jesus pointing to himself, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. Simon was not the rock that the church was built on. It was built on Jesus. But he did say, even though you're simply Peter, I'm going to give you some keys. Anybody following me here today? 
He said, your name is Peter. You're right. I am Jesus. I am the son of the living God. I am that rock. And you are Peter, a piece of the rock. But what I want you to understand is that even though you are a piece of the rock, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. Even though Peter was not him, he knows him. I'm not, but I know the I am. Peter made it very clear. I am not the reason. He is the reason. At, uh, at, uh, all of a sudden, that normal man, that, that man Peter, who all of his failures and all of his mistakes and all of his denying of God, stands up and begins to get this realization. I know who he is. I know who he is. It's not me. I'm not the reason. That's not why I do what I do. He's the reason. He's the reason. And then Peter gets up and begins to preach. Repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And 3,000 people receive the Holy Ghost. But not because of him. Please understand, the same Peter that said, I don't know him. The same Peter that said, I am not one of them, is now the Peter that says, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I to thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The same Peter. Same man that tried to hide in the shadows when Jesus was crucified. Now walks by sick people in his shadow, heals them. The same Peter. He said, I know I am not the reason. He's the reason. Because I'm just Peter. I'm just a piece of the rock. It wasn't even Christmas. But I'm sure it was the best gift he had ever received. I I understand what is being said at Christmas. And please don't, don't misinterpret. I understand what's being said at Christmas time. And when they refer to Jesus as the reason for the season... But here's what you need to understand. We should not allow secular concepts or a retail industry cloud our vision as to why we celebrate that season. So yes, he is the reason of the season. But it's because that God Almighty who clothed himself in flesh and was born in a manger and came to deliver us from this world and deliver us from ourselves. I just don't want to limit his gift delivering power to just a season of the year because he is the reason all season long, all year long, all every day that I live. He is the reason. It's got nothing to do with me. It's him. Some of us need to stand up this morning and realize that you are a perfected being when God has touched you. We're not perfect in what we do, but with God, He makes all things perfect. And so I need you to stand up for yourself and be yourself today. And don't let the adversary tell you that you don't belong. Look at him and say that I do belong. And I belong just like I am. In all of my imperfections, I still belong. I belong just as I am. I am a part of this as anybody else. Let me share this with you. And I'm, I'm going to come to a close here in just a moment. But let me share this story with you. There was a man, <coughs> excuse me, who went out into the street. He found a beggar, found a beggar that was living in a cardboard box. And so he took this beggar home and and he he fed him and he he cleaned him up and he put new clothes on him. And he looked at him and he said, he said, beggar, he said, "I'm, I'm giving you a fresh start. I'm giving you a fresh beginning. And he said, here are the keys to this house. It's yours. I give it to you. A month later, the man came back to check on the beggar. And the front door to the house was open and the man went from room to room looking and calling for this beggar. He checked the whole house, but he couldn't find him anywhere. And so ultimately he goes downstairs into the basement. And when he opened the door down in the basement, there on the floor was the beggar with his cardboard box set up in the floor and he was sleeping in it. He had it all, but he felt like he didn't belong. He had everything available to him, every benefit, every blessing, everything he had available to him, but he didn't feel like he belonged where he was at. Couldn't leave what he used to be. And so here's what I need you to hear me say this morning is that some of us need to get out of the basement. 
You need to throw your cardboard box away and realize this is your house. I was talking to somebody just the other day and, and they made this statement to me. They said, I just, I just love your church. I said, whoa, 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 stop. Hang on a second. First of all, it's not my church. It's our church. Because you need to understand you belong just as much as anybody else does. This isn't just our church of, of just a certain group of people at New Life. This is our church as a family. I told somebody this morning when I was talking to him, I said, we only let you come as a guest like once or twice. After that, you become part of the family. And it, it's not their church, it's my church. And I said, if I ever get you to the concept where you quit saying their church or your church and start saying my church, then you realize and identify that you belong in the kingdom of God just like anybody else does. Get rid of your cardboard box. Get up off the floor and realize that you belong as much as anybody else does. Quit letting the devil tell you that you don't belong. Quit letting the enemy tell you that you don't have right or authority. You belong. Just as much as anybody else does. You have the same power and the anointing as everyone else. Your shadow will do the same thing as Peter's did. If you believe it. You, you can say in the name of Jesus and see people healed. We've seen it happen over and over again. You can say in the name of Jesus. How? Why? How can you do that? Because it's not about you. You're not the reason. He is the reason. It's not what you can do. It's what he can do. He is the reason. Again, he is the healer. He's the deliverer. He's the prince of peace. And when you know him, these things shall ye do and greater things than these shall ye do. He said that same power and that same authority you have. You know why? Because you belong. And it's not because of you. It's because of him. Let me, let me just share this with you as the music comes. Let me, let me share a little bit of the end of Peter's life. Understand he had this meeting with Jesus. And Jesus looked at him and said, uh, Thou art Peter. And upon the rock that, that I am, I'm going to build my church, but I'm going to give you some keys. I'm going to give you some power and some authority. And at the end of Peter's life, he was cast into a prison called Mamertine. And for nine months, he was in absolute darkness. He endured horrible torture and shackled, being shackled to a post. And he was, he was chained in an upright position, unable to lay down or rest for nine months. Yet... When you read the story, it said that he converted the jailers and 47 others while he was in that condition. You know why? Because he knew that it wasn't because of him. He couldn't do it, but it was because of the power that was dwelling inside of him. He basically said, I'm not the reason. He is the reason. Jesus, the, the I am, the, the rock, was crucified on Calvary. And Peter was just a simple piece of the rock. He, he even said, in fact, I, I'm not even worthy enough to be crucified like him. Crucify me upside down. Because I'm not the reason. He's the reason. And so here's what I need you to hear this morning and an encouragement uh, to you this morning, whether you're new to this or whether you've been in this for a long time because the devil attacks each and every one of us if we're not careful. And we get caught up in the same mentality of this un unhappiness and I'm, I'm unsettled. And I, I've heard people that have been in the church, please hear me for a moment. I've heard people that have been in the church for a long time and all of a sudden they say, I'm just not happy. How can you not be happy living for a God who has done everything that he has done for you. How can you not be happy living for a God who has blessed you the way that he has? How can you not be happy living for what God has done for you in your life? But I hear him say, I'm just not happy. I'm just not settled. And then they start looking at others and say, well, if I had the breaks that they've had, then maybe it would be different for me. Or if I had the heritage that they have, then maybe it would be different for me. But I'm, I'm just not happy. And then we go and try to change the exterior and we go to try to change things about us to try to create happiness and it doesn't work. It doesn't happen. Because happiness is not an outward emotion. It's something that comes from the inside. I got to be happy in here. And you know what makes happy in here is when I settle some issues in my life. 
pulled up behind a truck yesterday and he had it real bold on his back window. It said, as for me and my family, we're going to live for the Lord. He made some establishments. He made some things priority in his life. And are you going to have bad days? Yes, you're going to have bad days. As a matter of fact, it was stated that man who's born of woman is a few days in full of trouble. So we're going to have bad days. We're going to have trouble. We're going to be sick. We're going to have problems that take place. We're going to have situations that happen. There's going to be attacks that come on us. But please understand, it's not you that's going to get yourself through it anyway. He is the reason. And for me to not be happy living for Him, then I'm not doing something right. What I have done ultimately is I put it back on me instead of Him. See, you're unique to God and He wants you just the way you are. Please quit making excuses as to why you can't live for Him. Quit allowing the devil to make you feel unworthy, undeserving, and useless. Pick yourself up this morning. Get your confidence back together and then proclaim boldly, I am not the reason, but in every season of my life, He is the reason. He's the reason why I live. He's the reason why I breathe. He's the reason why I do everything that I do. Yes, living for God causes me to change some things in my life. But you know what? I didn't want to be what I was anyway. I wanted to be a new creature in Christ Jesus. And so following after Him changes some things in my life. And that's the testimony that I have. I told you several weeks ago on Wednesday nights that the greatest thing you have is your testimony. Nobody else has your testimony but you and what God brought you from and how God carried you and how God took care of you and and you can look at some people and and you know some of you want to be Bible scholars and know every single answer there is in the Bible but really all you need to know is this is what I used to be and this is what I am now and the only thing that changed is he is the reason he's the reason stand with me this morning and I I want to just ask you here today and not as a I don't want to separate anybody out or pull anybody separate. I just want us to come as a family this morning. And God has has touched us down here this morning. But I I felt strongly this morning. And I even had a conversation with somebody this morning. The whole time I was talking to him, I was thinking about this. You got to understand that it's, it's not me that makes the change. It's not me that does anything. It's him. When he looked at Peter, he told him, he said, you're Peter. And that's all you can be. You you can't be any different. You're Peter. He said, but what I want you to understand, Peter, is that when I come into your life, you're going to act different. You're going to do things different, but you're still Peter. But I want you to have the keys that gives you the power and the authority over every aspect of your life. I want you to understand you're not the rock but you got the power of the rock. You're not me, but you've got my power living on the inside. And then he made very plainly to say, greater things than these shall ye do. The problem is the devil attacks us with this low self-esteem. And I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to be honest for just a minute, okay? I I just feel this in the Holy Ghost. I, I need to be honest with you for just a second. Some of us deal with this physically on the outside. We deal with this low self-esteem. I don't know how many times I come across people that the problem they're having and the trial that they're having and the things that they're going through and why they have constant problems is because they have a low self-esteem about themselves. And it's because somebody in their life somewhere told them they weren't, weren't deserving or told them they were worthless or told them they didn't amount to anything. Maybe it was a parent in your life. Maybe it was a, a grandparent. Maybe it was a teacher. Maybe it was somebody in your life who you felt was influential and they looked at you and told you you were worthless told you you didn't amount to anything and you're never going to make anything of your life and some of you headed down that path because you believe what they told you but then you came in contact with a man named Jesus who looked at you and said you are everything that I created you to be I don't want you to be somebody else I don't want you to act like somebody else I want you to be mine just the way I created you if I want you to act like anybody want you to act like me because I'm going to be the one that changes you 
it's not you it's me and so you struggle with this on the outside this low self-esteem and and I'm not not listen please understand I know there's a difference in confidence and pride okay I don't mean pride I mean a confidence a boldness on me that says you know what I am something when God came in contact with me it doesn't matter what other people have told me it doesn't matter what society may have told me that I need to do to be considered uh, uh, popular or be considered uh, successful it doesn't matter what society tells me it only matters what God has done because he is the reason anyway anything that I have if you've been joining in our Wednesday night classes and brother Robinson is teaching such a such a tremendous message and lesson that where my treasure is it's it's not in my stuff that I own It's not in the things that I have, but it's in my walk with God. That's where my treasure really is because everything I've got comes from Him anyway. You didn't do it. You did it because God gave you the ability to do it. And when you understand that, it changes everything about who you are. See, when we deal with that on the outside, it transfers to the inside. It transfers to the spiritual. And then the devil starts making you think, you can't do this and you're unworthy and you're useless and God could never use you and God could never make anything out of you and God could never do anything with you and that is just a lie from the pit of hell please hear me that is a lie of the adversary because God can use you and every one of us have a ministry in our own right you're going to reach people that I'll never be able to reach but Joe you don't mind I use you as an example just not too long ago he spoke at a uh, at a church part of a halfway house program in, in another state and began to speak to him and they they said we've never heard things like this and they began to have this feeling and he began to pray for people now some could have looked at joe when he came to us uh, about a year and a half ago and looked at joe when he came in all grizzly adams looking and scary and some of you didn't even walk up and shake his hand because you're nervous he thought he was a mean guy he's the biggest baby in the building but he went and he communicated something to people because of what God had done. And he'll boldly tell you right now, if I'm lying, he'll straighten me out, but I'm telling you I ain't lying. But he'll tell you it's not because of him. He's the reason why I'm able to do what I can do. He's the reason why I'm able to share what I can share. And some people might have told him, you won't ever amount to anything. You can't ever do anything. You'll never reach anybody for God. You'll never be an example. What can you possibly do? And look at what happened in his life. And how God's already begun to use him. I told him, I said, Joe, you're going to talk to people that I never get a chance to talk to. But here's the problem. Some of us, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get in trouble here. Some of us want to look over there. Joe knows I love him, so it's okay. Some of us want to look over there and say, well, he said he was preaching. Who made him a preacher? Let me explain something to you very simply. When you give your testimony, you're preaching. Just because you didn't get up behind the pulpit and have a text and have an illustration and, and do all the stuff that we do, that doesn't make you a preacher. I hope you know that don't make you a preacher because I know a lot of people get up behind pulpits that are not preachers. I know one got a great big church. Everybody says he's a great preacher. He's not a preacher. He's a motivational speaker. He don't preach against anything. A preacher is somebody who's going to tell you what God will do in your life and how God will change your life and tell you about his love and his mercy and his grace and tell you how God can change you and do it because he did it for me. He's the reason, not me. And so I need you to understand this morning that as much as the devil has beat you up, I just want us to come down together today and we're just going to pray together and we're going to get a confidence builder together and we're just going to let the adversary know I understand that I'm not perfect but because of him he's made me that way and whenever you realize that when the devil comes against you and tries to tempt you and tries to throw things in your face and and tries to attack you with certain things if you'll just look at him and say listen you're not fighting me you're fighting him And if you want to mess with his kids, you want to mess with his children, that's your business. But I'm just telling you, it won't work out well for you. If somebody comes and attacks one of your children, what are you going to do? Well, go ahead, have them. I didn't like that one anyway. (laughs) Go ahead, you can have them. Huh? Even the one you don't really like, you're going to go defend. 
Hello? So if we're going to do that for our own children, how much more do you think God's going to do for His children? And when the adversary comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against it. He's going to come in and separate. He's going to be the divide. He's going to be the wall. He's going to be the defense. He's going to come in and defend. Quit trying to fight it yourself and let God have it. Quit letting the devil destroy you. You mean something to God. You mean something to God. You mean something to Him. So don't let anybody tell you that you're worthless. I wonder if we could come just as they begin to sing. Just, I wonder if you'll just come and stand here today. We're, we're just going to spend a few minutes down here talking to God. But just, just come down together. Just come down together. and I know I don't have you running the aisles and all that kind of stuff. That's okay. It wasn't meant to be. Sometimes we just need to slow down long enough and identify who we are. And identify what God's done in our lives. Sometimes we need to stop long enough to realize I have what I have because of Him. He's the reason. And not just for one season, but for every day of my life. I wonder as you, as you come and just kind of pull in. Let everybody get down here this morning that's wanting to come. Just don't be afraid of the altar. It won't hurt you. It's carpet just like what you're standing on. It ain't going to hurt you. But I wonder if you'll just come and I wonder if, if, if you'll just be honest with yourself this morning. And, and, and be honest that you've really struggled with some things and struggled with some, some self-esteem issues, whether physically but also spiritually. You've struggled with some things. Like maybe I don't belong. Maybe I'm not part. Listen, I'm telling you, you belong just as much as anybody else. The devil has no right to tell you otherwise. And so I wonder if for just a moment, those of you that are here and even in the auditorium, if you'll just bow your heads for just a moment, close your eyes. And here's what I want you to rehearse in your mind. I want you to rehearse every blessing. I want you to rehearse every healing. I want you to rehearse every miracle where God stepped in. When you didn't know how it was going to work out, you didn't know what was going to happen. But God stepped in. I want you to rehearse that right now because... All of the things that are coming against you are trying to cause you to forget those things. But I want you to just think about them for just a moment. And I just know, because I know what it does for me and you're human like I am. When I start thinking about those things, it does something on the inside of me. It starts building a boldness on the inside of me. It starts building a courage on the inside of me that says, you know what, God has blessed me. And God has touched me. And God has ministered in my life. And God's grace and mercy has moved on me. And God's love and power has moved on me. I'm not going to let the devil. I'm not going to let anybody else. I'm not going to let my own flesh. I'm not going to let me tear myself down. But I'm going to know I'm not the reason anyway. He's the reason. He's the reason why I have what I have. He's the reason why I stand here today. God, I just want you to reconnect that concept with me. God, I want you to reconnect with me once again, God, that it's not me, but it's you in my life. God, every good gift that I have comes from you. God, everything that I have in my life comes from you. God, every blessing that I have comes from you. God, I'm not going to let low self-esteem, whether physical or spiritual, attack me. But God, I know I'm a child of the King. And no enemy, no adversary, and no person can rob that from me because I am your child. Begin to talk to him just this morning as you rehearse those things. God, I thank you, Lord, for the blessings. God, I thank you for the touch. Come on, that's all right. Just be real with him. God, I thank you, Lord, for how you've always been there for me. God, I thank you, Lord, how you've come through, God, each and every time I've needed you. God, I thank you, Lord, how you've come through each and every time, God, that I've needed you. Come on, that's all right. Let that sweet presence of the Lord, that mercy and that grace, that love that he has. Let him just wrap your arms, his arms around you right now and you remember where he brought you from. Remember what you are. Remember 
how he carried you when everybody else gave up on you. Remember how he loved you when everybody else gave up on you. He's the reason. He's the reason. He's the reason. In Jesus' name. I'm going to talk to him for just a moment. In Jesus' name. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There have been times I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave me blessed consolation. My trials only come to make me strong. And I've seen a lot of faces, but there's been times I've felt, felt so all alone. In that lonely hour, in that precious lonely hour, Jesus let me know that I was His own. Jesus. 
how he's carried you through. Come on, you belong to him. Don't ever let anybody tell you that you're unworthy. Don't let anybody tell you you're worthless and you're no good. But just know what God has brought me out of. What God has brought me through. In Jesus' name. They're going to sing again. You can sing with them. Enjoy your fellowship day today. We're going to baptize Greg this morning before we leave. He texted the other day and said, can I get baptized? Actually, he said, how hard would it be for me to get baptized? I said, it ain't hard at all. And he said, then I'd like to get baptized in Jesus' name. So we're going to baptize him here in just a moment. But why don't you just look somebody in the eye and tell them, say, you belong with us. You belong to the king. You belong as part of this family. You belong with us. And God's carried me through every problem and every trial and every situation. I'm going to trust him in Jesus' name. Greet one another. Do it all. I've learned to trust in God.